recently, I released a video comparing the Luxata tower stove against the Solo light stove. And in the comments section below, a couple of viewers commented that they weren't able to get the, their Luxata tower stove to gasify. So I thought I would make a video today having a closer look at the Luxata tower stove to see if it is actually undergoing gasification as it burns. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay, before we begin, I'm going to take a moment to clarify what it is I mean when I say gasification in relation to small wood stoves like the Luxata tower stove or the Solar Light or any of the other wood gasification stoves that are on the market today. So let's be clear, I am not an expert in this. I have done my research, I've spoken to people who are experts, and I'm going to attempt to give an explanation that I think is on a level that most people will grasp the concept without being overly technical and lose people's interests. So to begin, the process of wood gasification starts with a process known as pyrolysis. And pyrolysis, simply put, is where wood or any organic matter is heated to a point where it starts to release volatile or combustible gases. In a small wood stove like that, you achieve that by lighting the wood from the top and the hot embers start to go move into the fuel that's in the stove. That's a process known as TLUD, T-L-U-D, which stands for top lit updraft. So what happens is you do light the wood from the top and as the embers move down into the wood, they are fed from oxygen from underneath the stove up through the fuel that's in the stove. But at a certain point, the, the fuel itself starts to starve for lack of oxygen at the top, but is still receiving enough oxygen from the blow to maintain a level of, I wouldn't call it a combustion, but where the embers begin to or continue to glow red hot and you still see active coals down there. Now, what happens at that point is the wood or other fuels release their volatile gases due to the heat, and then at a point just above where they're being released or the gases are being released, warmed, heated air is reintroduced to the chamber of the burn, the burn chamber and is ignited by the heat when it meets with the volatile gases. So when you see that taking place, you get a secondary combustion and you get a very clean, efficient burn. Now, that's again probably an oversimplification, but what we, I should be able to better explain it as we demonstrate, because I do have a stove I will be comparing with this that does gasify based on my experience. So let's just talk about this for a minute in relation to the, or to the Luxata tower stove. The comment was that it is not a true gasifier because we're not seeing the wood simply smolder and release gases which are then ignited by the jets but we're seeing a combination of the wood burning in the chamber and gases being ignited by the jets of hot air as uh, right above the burn. If that's the case that's not true gasification however it's still a more efficient burn than a lot of stoves will achieve because you still have a secondary combustion. Now, secondary combustion is not a hard thing to achieve. A lot of stoves will achieve secondary combustion where air is reintroduced to the mix above the layer of the, the burning fuel. In fact, my firebox stove will do that. You'll oftentimes see what appear to be jets of fire coming back into the burn chamber above the burning wood. Same thing goes for my IKEA wood stove or hobo stove and a number of other stoves. It's simply a matter of air being reintroduced to the burn chamber and mixing with the volatile gases that didn't burn completely in the fire below them and adding to the efficiency of the stove. So even if this does not gasify properly, it still adds to the efficiency of the stove, but let's just test it out and see if it really does gasify. All right, for the sake of time, I have preloaded both of these stoves with kiln dried hardwood, primarily uh, maple and oak, maybe a little bit of birch inside. I'll show you this, how I've loaded the stove. So this is the Luxetta Scout stove, and it is top or vertically loaded, and that's uh, what I find the easiest thing to do to get a burn going with these stoves because it allows air to move up through. I'll be using some inexpensive commercial fire starter and I'll be building a fire on top using dry wood chips. Same thing for the tower stove, preloaded. A little bit more wood in the, the larger stove than in the, this, the tower stove, but uh, for this test, it'll work out just fine. So what am I gonna do? 
I'm bringing the burnt, you notice I don't have the pot stand on yet because I'll get the fire going then I'll put the pot stand on. You can't do that with the tower stove. I'm going to light these up. Make sure that is going. Down inside there. Are you going? Yes, you are. Same thing with this one. I think I can put that in a better, a little better in the center. Now, as those little wax cardboard fire starters get started, I'll put some wood chips on top. Uh, they look like they're getting started quick enough to start feeding small wood chips. Now, if I was in the woods, of course, this would be an entirely different process. I would still preload the stove with wood, but I'd be using different materials to light it with and to build a small fire on top than I am here. The trick is to get a fire going on top of your fuel because it is that original fire, which does tend to smoke when you first get it going, that original fire that'll create the embers and start the pyrolysis effect down in the fuel load below. All right, starting to take off quickly now. Bit more wood chips there, bit more wood chips here. I almost put that one out. Now I'll put the pot stand on. And as you can see, there's a little bit of smoke being generated. It'll take a few minutes before that top burning fire does move into the fuel load down below. And then we'll see whether or not pyrolysis is taking effect and whether or not these stoves both gasify. And uh, then we'll have a look at it then. So what I'll do is I'll bring it back in a few minutes when the stoves reach an efficient state of burn. Okay, both stoves have been running for about five minutes at this point, and the fuel is well engaged by flame. Looking from this viewpoint right now, I can see that I do have secondary combustion in both stoves. And what I mean by that, of course, is that the air entering in through those ports at the top of the burn chamber is producing flame as the air mixes with the, the unburnt fuel. However, does that mean I have gasification? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pot stand off of the Luxata Scout stove to get a closer look what's happening at the ports. If you're able to see, and let's see if I can get in a little bit closer on the Luxata. If you look at the Luxada stove, what you'll notice is, is that there is flame coming in through the ports, and I have had better demonstrations of this, but still you should be able to see that there is flame at the ports, the secondary ports around the burn chamber, but it would appear that the wood itself is not burning. Now, when I say I've had better demonstrations of this, I can see flame on the wood, which means it's not completely gasifying the way it should. However, for the most part, it just looks and appears as if the wood is charring, which in fact it is. That's the pyrolysis, where it's releasing the gases with, contained within the wood, and it is at the level of the jets where the gasification has taken effect. Now, let me just put that pot stand back on and you get a clearer picture of the jets that are releasing or combining with the, the air combining out of the jets, combining with the wood gases to create the gasification effect. Very clean, very efficient burn. Now let's just focus over to the tower stove. Okay, little different story going on here. So I'm trying to get a good focus for you. In this case, I don't think I'm seeing true gasification take effect, maybe partial gasification. Because what's happening down inside as I look is I can see the fuel burning as well as secondary combustion. So if the fuel is burning, it is not gasifying. In other words, there's no pyrolysis taking effect. Well, that's not entirely true. There is pyrolysis, but it's not a complete and efficient pyrolysis because as long as the fuel is burning, it is consuming some of the wood gas that's being released right at the level of the wood. However, I still see secondary combustion where the air coming in through those secondary ports is mixing with any of the unburnt air and you're getting secondary combustion which is more efficient than if it had no secondary 
jets, but not as efficient as true gasification. And one of the things you can see, if you look at the two stoves, and let me see if I can back up a little bit in order for you to see this. The other way, Mark. Hopefully it's showing up in frame right now, is that there is a little bit of black sooty smoke being produced by the tower stove that's being released and that's evidence that you're not getting a full complete gasification taking place. However, take a look down inside there. That doesn't mean that there isn't benefit for the design of this stove. It's still a very good, very efficient stove with some secondary combustion taking place. Now my fuel is almost all consumed down there and uh, it's uh, burning up much quicker than it did on the other stove, but it's, uh, it seems to be working pretty good. Okay, I think we've seen enough to come to a few conclusions or at least a few observations about whether or not the Luxata tower stove is actually a gasifier stove. All right, is the Luxata tower stove a true wood gasifying stove? No, no it is not. It does not gasify like a true wood gasifier should. Now having said that, there were periods of gasification taking place but as long as I could look in the stove and see that the fuel, the wood, is actually engaged with flame, then I know it's not gasifying properly. Does that mean that this is not an effective wood stove? Not at all, because there was still secondary combustion taking place. So air was still moving up the, between the two walls of the burn chamber, being reintroduced to the burn chamber at the top, mixing with the unburned wood gases, and creating a more efficient burn. It just wasn't gasifying properly. Do you know one of the reasons I think that is is because I think as we have discussed in previous videos there is a lot of holes on the bottom of the burn chamber. In fact for the process of gasification I think there are too many holes. So there was too much air being introduced inside. I think that's true but I want to throw it out to the experts out there. Do you think that's part of the reason why this stove is not gasifying properly? Because there's too much air being drawn up through the body of the fuel. It's not being extinguished at the top of the burn as it should with gasification. I'll open that up because I think that's an interesting concept to explore. What I mean is what if I were to drop something inside a hole with plates in it that would reduce the amount of air coming up but not, not eliminate the air but just reduce the amount of air coming up, would that change this stove into a true gasifier? Easy enough to test in a future video. Something else I want to test in a future video is this stove with wood pellets and with charcoal. So I'll do that in a future video but for now that's all I have in this video so get out and explore, take that past left traveled, it'll make all the difference. Bye for now.